In this video, I'm gonna show you the difference in calculating return on equity and return on common equity. Return on equity is a company's net income divided by its average stockholder's equity. And it tells you how good a job the company did generating a profit for all of its equity holders. And when I say all of the equity holders, I mean the company's common shareholders, its preferred shareholders, and anyone owning a non-controlling interest in the company's subsidiaries. Return on common equity, on the other hand, just focuses on how good a job the company did generating a profit for its common shareholders. So you'll notice in our formula for return on common equity, in the numerator, we're just focusing on net income attributable to common shareholders. And in the denominator, we're just focusing on common equity. Okay, so that's the difference between return on common equity and return on equity. You'll notice that both the numerator and the denominator are calculated differently. When it comes to return on common equity, we're gonna be excluding returns and equity that are attributable to non-controlling shareholders and to any preferred shareholders. So let's do an example with an actual company. So we're gonna take the company Procter & Gamble, and I've looked up their financials from their 10K, and we're gonna do some calculations to get their return on equity and their return on common equity. Okay, so I've got the formulas uh, here for each one and I've written out the numbers, but I wanna show you where I got these numbers from. So I'm gonna show you, for example, where I got Procter & Gamble's net income from. Okay, so it came from uh, their 10K filing, and I've got here, they actually, in note six of their 10K filing, uh, they had this nice disclosure where they showed the company's net income. They call it net earnings. And it's in millions. So this, even though it says 14,738, that's actually 14.738 billion. Okay, so that's this number right here. Okay, that is the net income in our numerator when we calculate return on equity. Now, to get the average stockholder's equity, I had to go to the balance sheet. So I've got a picture here of an excerpt from the balance sheet. So we've got total stockholder's equity as of June 30th, 2023 and June 30th, 2022. So the last two balance sheet dates. So I take this number and add it to this number and divide by two to get the average total stockholder's equity. And so that is this right here. Okay, that's the average stockholder's equity when calculating return on equity. So it's all of the equity, okay? It's including preferred equity, non-controlling interest, and so forth. So we've got the net income, right? That's this number right here, okay? And then we're gonna divide that by the average stockholder's equity. That's gonna give us our return on equity, which in this case, 31.38%. Now, the return on common equity, we're gonna have to make some adjustments. Now, you see the first adjustments that we're gonna subtract 85, that is income attributable to non-controlling interest. So there's some non-controlling shareholders. So Procter & Gamble has at least one subsidiary where it has a controlling interest, but there's some non-controlling shareholders. And that 85 is representing uh, the, the share of that income that's attributable to those non-controlling shareholders. Because with return on common equity, we just want to focus on the profit attributable to common shareholders, we're going to subtract that. So that's why we're subtracting the 85 from the 14,738. Next, Procter & Gamble also has preferred shareholders. So we're going to subtract the preferred dividends. Okay, so now we're subtracting not just the income attributable to non-controlling interest, but also the dividends to preferred shareholders. So that's why we're taking, so here we have the 14,738. But here we're return on common equity and then in the numerator, we got 14,738 minus income attributable to non-controlling shareholders and minus the preferred dividends. So the numerator here is going to be lower than this numerator here. Now, in the denominator, we see you see I'm still taking an average of two things, but I need the average common equity. So what I need to do is I need to go back. I can't use this here because that's the average total equity. So I'm gonna go back to the balance sheet here, okay? Now, it doesn't tell you the total common equity. I went and calculated it, okay? So, but here's how I calculate it. So I take the total stockholders equity, for example, for June 30th, 2023, 47,065, and I subtract two things. So we've got preferred stock right here, 819, and then we have not controlling interest here of 288, okay? So I took, 47,065 minus 819 minus 288, that gives me 45,958. Now, for 2022, I took the 46,854 
minus 843 minus 265, and I got 45,746. So again, what is this non-controlling interest here? That is uh, referring to the equity in the entire entity attributable to those non-controlling shareholders. And here we have preferred stock. That's not common equity, right? That's equity attributable to preferred shareholders. That's why these things are being subtracted. Okay, so again, just took the total equity, subtracted the preferred equity, subtracted the not controlling interest. Okay, now I take these two things, add them together, and divide by two, and that will be the average uh, common equity. So let's go back now to our formula, return on common equity. Okay, we see that if we take in the denominator here, we've got the average common equity. That's not the average total equity. That's why the denominator is different from the denominator over here. Okay, so we see that we have 14.371 billion divided by 45.852 billion gives us 31.34%. Now you see there's not that huge a difference here uh, between the return on common equity and the return on equity. Now, if you had a hypothetical situation where the company had no non-controlling interests and no preferred stock, no preferred share, so if there was no preferred stock, no preferred equity, uh, and there was no non-controlling interest, in that scenario, the return on equity and the return on common equity would actually be the same because we need to make these adjustments, 